sharing confession about Brin's Andrew Xbox. Brin's Philip had a staggering confession about his second son, Brin's Andrew, according to a royal biographer. Nigel Cawthorn, author of Brin's Andrew, Epstein and the Palace, review on a podcast that Philip called Andrew the boss. This may be a shock to many, as Philip is often seen as a strict and no-nonsense father and dominant character within the royal family. However, it seems that when Andrew was a child, he often got away with many things other children could not, and that essentially made him the boss. Pod Save the Queen is hosted by Anne Gripper and features the liberal royal editor Russell Myers. In an episode last month, Miss Gripper interviewed Mr. Cawthorn, and the pair was discussing how Andrew would often avoid punishment as a child. And the author revealed, even Prince Philip calls Andrew the boss. Miss Gripper replied, "Wow, if Prince Philip calls him the boss, you know." Because Prince Philip always very much seems like the iron ruler when you're quiet in the family. She added that Mr. Cawthorn, in fact, wrote a book after the funnier side of Prince Philip, to which he said, "Philip and Andrew do share certain characteristics. They both give offense, father and son." The revelation came in a discussion about whether Andrew is the queen's favorite son. It has long been claimed that the queen favored her third child, with many concerned she must be devastated about the Jeffrey Epstein scandal, which has led him stepping back from royal duties. Miss Gripper asked Mr. Cawthorn about when Andrew was young and various anecdotes about him getting away with cacophony of mischievous deeds. She said. I guess there's always been this feeling that he might be the queen's favorite son. I'm not entirely sure whether the theory initiated, but certainly if you can get away with putting itching powder in your mom's bag and not getting grounded for months, and your mom is the queen, then you've clearly managed to get a little bit of. She added, "It sounds like he was always mischievous, shy." Who was always getting away with it at home, climbing onto the roof to turn the TV area so the queen couldn't be able to watch the racing. I mean, that sounds like a fairy sent them to the tower offense. And the queen saying he's not always a little ray of sunshine about the home. In this way, it seems that Andrew's personality was always very confident and boisterous. To the point where even his parents were running circles around him, Mr. Cawthorn added that there was evidence that the Queen and Andrew share a close relationship into adulthood. He said, "I love the way she calls him into the palace, and over a cup of afternoon tea, she pins another couple of medals for him. It's all totally cozy. Would you like another title?" Miss Gripper agreed that it is a totally different world. This story is backed up by another royal biographer, Andrew Morton, in his 1983 book, Andrew, the Playboy Prince. He wrote, "On a chilly February afternoon, the young man Prince Philip called the bus came bouncing into the world. His arrival heralded the star of the Queen's second family, a source of great joy and pleasure to her." He described how Andrew's boisterous behavior sometimes caused issues. For example, one time when having a boxing match with his father, one of the rivals got through and left Philip with a black eye. The Duke of Edinburgh was headed to a film premiere that night, and he stepped out of the car. He pointed to the bruise and said, "That was the boss." 